All right, hey everybody, so welcome to another After We Collided movie video. Now today's video is of course talking all about giving my expanded thoughts on this whole U.S. distributor situation. Now what I'm talking about here, for anybody who just might be finding this video for the first time, over the past couple of days, Anna Todd revealed that we do not have a U.S. distributor yet for the movie After We Collided. Now, um, I started scratching my head because I was like, well, wait a minute, I remember having a conversation with somebody who was connected to Anna on Twitter, and I was like, you know, well, I had a conversation with somebody, and I was just talking to the person, and they told me, uh, yes, we do, we just can't tell you uh, who it is yet. And so, all, the, and so, you know, and I was like, and I was trying to find the conversation, I was trying, you know, to pull it back up, but then somebody actually, you know, ended up screenshotting the conversation, and um, they, they found it and they put it up on Twitter. Um, but yeah, so anyway, over the past couple of days, um, Anna Todd was pretty much, you know, talking with a fan online or pretty much responding to a fan online. And the fan was just like, you know, hey, Anna, we're, we're tired. Can you please just tell us who the U.S. distributor is? And Anna Todd just like flat out said, we don't have a U.S. distributor. Uh, what are you talking about? We, we don't have one yet. And I was like, wait, what? Like, huh? And the reason why I was like, wait, what, huh? Is because um, Anna Todd keeps saying, you know, April 2020. The film is going to come out in April 2020. And the big concern there is, so, so a lot of people have been asking me, what does that mean for the release date? If we do not have a U.S. distributor yet, does that mean that the film will still come out in April 2020? All right, well, let's, go, let's just go ahead and say that April 2020 is still a long ways away. Yes, it can completely come out in April 2020. Uh, they don't need to start the promo yet. I mean, they're not in panic territory uh, yet when it comes to the promo uh, in terms of like a trailer or anything. I mean, they just finished filming. They're not going to put out a trailer uh, this soon. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they still got some time to figure all this out. Um, but the big concern that I have is that the studios are the ones who actually set the release dates. It's not the producers. It's not the director. It's not the writer. It's not. It would not be Anna Todd. It would actually be the U.S. the the, the studios. Whoever is picked is the one who would actually decide on when the film is released. Now, given Anna Todd's contract, it would not surprise me if at some point in the contract it says this film needs to come out in April of 2020. It would not surprise me if that is somewhere in her contract. But let's just say for five seconds that, you know, it's not. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the studios are the ones who actually set the release date, not Anna Todd. Uh, so that could end up affecting the release date depending on when they actually get picked up, depending on when they actually can get a studio to sign on to this thing. Um, another thing that immediately started to concern me is, as many of you know, um, some leaked footage, um, some leaked photos started going around uh, Twitter, around social media uh, over the past couple of days from a French uh, television uh, Instagram account, wh wherever it was from. And um, the footage uh, was part showing part of the Seattle sequence. Now, let me go ahead and say this for anybody who is a little bit head scratching over that footage and why has it not been revealed yet. Uh, the thing with that footage is they 100% knew that those people were on set. I mean, some of those shots that we actually saw in that footage, you don't get those shots unless they actually know that you're on set. The thing is, is that the Anna Todd and, the, and company never knew that the, that the footage was going to come out this soon. They probably expected it to come out, you know, sometime next year, you know, closer to the release date. They never actually expected it to come out, you know, within about a week or two of filming or with the, uh, with the end of filming. That's, that's not what they imagined. So somebody who is connected to Anna Todd said that, that Anna Todd and company are taking um, legal actions against the, uh, the channel and so they did air the documentary. They did air the thing that where after we collided, where that footage was supposed to be, and after we collided was not a part of it, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, so yeah, that completely confirms that 100% that yes, uh, they were dealing with uh, some, that yes, that that person was telling the truth, that Anna Todd and the, and, and, and the rest were, um, you know, taking legal actions against that company. All right, so anyway... Uh, the thing about that footage is that the point that I'm making with that footage is um, a lot of locals were looking at the footage. Now, as somebody who is a fan of the book, that footage, you know, made me do backflips as much as my big ass can actually do backflips. I was actually doing backflips over that footage because it actually showed that we were getting book hardened. It showed a rougher side of Harden. But, you know, there were some locals, some people who had never read the book were pretty much saying, aha, 
This is what I'm always complaining about. This is what, what the problem with this thing is. There it is. He's being abusive. He's being abusive. He's toxic. See, I told you this was a toxic, abusive relationship. And so, you know, it's romanticizing an, ab an abusive, toxic relationship. That's what the locals were saying. That's what people... Uh, who maybe had not read the book were actually saying, you know, out of that footage. Whereas, you know, fans like me were pretty much doing backflips and saying, yay, real Harden is, you know, yay, Hero's actually getting to be real Harden. That could end up being a concern for a lot of studios. Now we, now we know, as fans, we know that this is not romanticizing an abusive, toxic relationship. We know that the point of this whole story is that it's meant to be an abusive, toxic relationship. We know that this is meant to be a cautionary tale. We know that this is not meant to be, you know, a do this type of story, but that this is not supposed to be a relationship to look up to. Um, we, we, we know all that, but see, the studios might not. So when they see, you know, people screaming and yelling about the, you know, abusive, toxic relationship, and, um, you know, romanticizing an abusive, toxic relationship, um, you know, some studios could get a little scared. They could get a little nervous. They could go like, I don't know if I want to touch this thing. And I think that that's why Anna Todd said that they're not going to go, they're only going to go with a studio who will live and breathe our movie, who will, who will actually, you know, understand our movie, who will actually fall in love with our movie, who will actually, you know, um, you know, love our movie, who will actually, you know, say positive things about our movie, who won't get nervous uh, by this material. And I think that that's really what Anna Todd needs to do. They need to go with a studio who's going to have to know that, you know, hey, you guys are going to get a little bit of controversy for this film, but you know what? You can weather the storm because the the benefits far outweigh the, you know, the positives far outweigh the negatives. You know, like you guys can make an awful lot of money with this movie. If you market it right, if you actually put your, your entire weight behind it, you know, hey, you know, this this thing can make you a lot of money. Especially now that you prove that you actually have, you know, that you actually are going back to the books, that you actually are going to make the fans happy, you know. If you make the fans happy, trust me, you're, you're going you're to make a lot of money. If you piss off the fans again, uh, you're probably going to fail. That would be my message to them. Uh, that would be my message to them about this entire thing. It would be like, if you, if you stick with the fans, if you make the fans happy, the fans will bring in, you know, their friends, their family, you know, people attached to them. Uh, but yeah, you got to make the fans happy first and foremost. Uh, you cannot worry about all the people who were never going to like this thing in the first place, who were never going to agree with this thing in the first place, and who were just going to say, you know, a big fuck you before the, you know, even the camera started rolling. Now, when I'm talking about this abusive, toxic relationship, a lot of people might start to say, you know, well, Charles, you know, Fifty Shades came out and that was like a billion dollar franchise. Hold the, hold your horses there. Uh, hold, let, 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 let's back it up a little bit there. Um, the first one was very successful. The next two movies, you actually saw a sharp decline in terms of money. It still became a billion dollar franchise, but you saw a sharp decline. And I think that there was also like a lot more controversy that hit the second and third movies, especially because the fact that they did wait a year. So the second and third movies pretty much came out in the, in the, uh, in the in the in the storm of Times Up and Me Too and then that, that whole Times Up Me Too movement. So a lot of people were kind of going back and you know re-examining those films. And so now we are living in a post Times Up Me Too era. And so a lot of studios could get a lot more concerned with showing an abusive toxic relationship. Even even if the even if the movie is a hundred percent, you know, the correct message and saying like, hey, this is not a relationship, you know, to prop up. This is not a relationship you should actually be in. You know, hey, this is a cautionary tale. Um, you know, the studios could get very, you know, could still get very concerned because there will be people out there who do say, hey, this is an abusive, toxic relationship. You know, what the fuck are you doing? You know, romanticizing an abusive, toxic relationship. Um, so, yeah, I, I would feel a little bit better about everything if I actually knew that they had a U.S. distributor lined up. Uh, but, yeah, the minute that Anna Todd said that uh, we do not have a U.S. distributor uh, that set off about a million alarm bells. That that started to have me, you know, scratching my head. That started to have me, you know, starting to feel a little bit more concerned uh, going forward. Now, before anybody freaks out, uh, like I said in another video that I made, um, you know, films get made all the time before they have a distributor. This is not out of the realm of, of normalcy. Uh, there was another film that I've, I've talked about on this channel a little bit called The Wolf of Wall Street, which is easily one of my favorite films of all time one of my favorite films, not my top four, but one of my favorite films. 
And so that was a film that was like a three hour, you know, hard R, NC-17 masquerading as an R-rated movie that no studio would pretty much touch. So they had to go out, you know, into to different production companies or actually this one kind of shady production company and, um, you know, kind of get the money through that. So that that company kind of comes in, gives them the money, and then they go to Paramount, and of course Paramount uh, distributes the, the movie. Uh, but yeah, the difference there being that The Wolf of Wall Street was filled to the brim with, you know, recognizable stars, had like a big name director behind it, whereas after we collided, uh, you can't really fall back on that. You know, it can't really guarantee that, you know, that we're going to get a U.S. distributor pretty much like right out of the gate because, you know, we don't have big names. We don't have big people attached to this. Um, even though like some people will say, well, what about Charlie Weber? What about Candace King? What about, uh, Dylan Sprouse? Uh, what about Roger Cumble? Y yeah, they're, they're known in circles. They're not known in like, like, in like the bigger thing to pretty much say, you know, like, oh, put this name on the poster and you can get butts in the seats or, you know, put this name on the poster and you get about $300 million, you know, out of the movie, which let's face it, this film is never going to be like a, a $300 million movie anyway, because I can guarantee that they have kept the budget low uh, to the point that they don't need to be a $300 million movie to be successful. And that's one of the great things that I love about the After series. And I hope that that's what I, I hope that, that, that they remember going into After We Collided is that this theme does not need to explode the budget. It doesn't need to be like that much bigger of a budget. I think that they did, uh, they, they worked well within the constructs of the budget uh, for the first film. Uh, there was really nothing in there that really screamed like, oh, they couldn't do this because they didn't have a budget for it. And there's really nothing in After We Collided or really anything in, in any of these books that really screams like, oh, we need a hundred million dollar budget to do this movie. We might need a little bit bigger of a budget, but not, you know, to some extreme degree uh, that this thing would never be able to make enough money, you know, to justify that kind of budget. Um, but yeah, overall, I am very excited about this. I'm not in panic mode yet. I'm not, you know, sounding the alarm bells just yet. Uh, I would say, ask me again at the end of the year. If we, we get to the end of the year, say December 31st, and we are still, you know, sitting here, what the hell is going on with the U.S. distributor? Why do we have a U.S. distributor yet? What the hell is going on with that? Uh, then, yeah, I would start sounding the alarm bells. But yeah, I can almost guarantee that, you know what? It's going to be fine. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll probably have a U.S. distributor, you know, probably in the next couple of weeks or in the next month or two, uh, because I'm still going to pretty much predict that, you know what, we're going to get that first trailer come November. All right. So jump down to the comment section below. Let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your continued love and support. As always, remember, if you like what you see here and you want to see more, go ahead and click that subscribe button and let's go through all the stuff you'll be able to find on this channel right now. So every day I'm going to be doing daily uploads of the after series read throughs where I literally go through the books and read to you guys page by page, chapter by chapter. The first three books after, after we collided and after we fell are already on the channel of their completion. I'm working on after ever happy right now that is about to end. And, and I, I will start on the book before as well, because so many of you guys have actually requested that. And those will be daily uploads barring any types of personal illnesses or issues. Now that we have the official green light of the After We Collided movie, I'm going to keep bringing you guys constant, constant, constant updates on that. So keep looking forward to that. You guys are going to be so updated that you'll be begging me to stop the updates. And those updates will also cover After We Fell and After We're Happy. So once we get the green light on those two movies, I'll also be bringing you guys constant updates on those as well. Every other day, I'll be doing different topics that come up in the after fandom. So if there's a topic out there that you guys want to see me talk about, go ahead and either leave it down in the comments, or you can find me on either Twitter, email, or my Facebook. All the relevant information is on the About section of the channel. As always, remember, this channel would not be able to grow to the heights that it has without you guys. And so for that, I am eternally, eternally grateful. But I know and you know that there are plenty of afternators out there who have no idea that this channel exists. So keep sharing the channel. Keep spreading the word of Charles's movie channel, because this will be the best damn after series channel that find right here on YouTube or dare I say it anywhere. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're not already. Remember to leave a like, remember to comment. Remember, my name is Charles. Welcome to the After Series channel and I'll see you later. After Naders. Take care y'all. Love you.